Isaiah 41, 13 says, For I, the Lord your God, will hold your right hand, saying to you, Fear not, I will help you. That's something we all need, huh? I would sink in deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, very deep in the wind, sinking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. From the waters the thee, now save am I. The thee, the thee, when God becomes pale. Uh, oh, you know what? It's a, uh, it's a different one. Let me just come back here for you for a second. They're both down and way out. Uh, yeah, he, he's not black. He's actually on the wall. On the wall. On the wall. And it is on the wall. I could make it louder. <laughs> Okay. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we're thankful to be here together. We're thankful to know you and to be able to remember what you've done for us. We pray that you also would help us to let others know and we can rejoice together. In Jesus' name, amen. Isn't ought a great word that we don't use so often? It is. <clears throat> I 
I ought to love my name for my sin and shame. This work in Good morning, everyone. It's so good to see you this morning as we uh, gather for worship this morning. There are those that are listening on the, on the phone right now, joining us on our free conference call. A big welcome to them as they are unable to be sitting in these pews, but they have chosen to uh, join us in worship right along with us on the phone as we worship together. I hope you guys are happy to be in God's house. That's the reason we should gather, to come together and praise God together and join in worship, join in praying for one another, and join in wondering what's happening this week. And so you have your bulletins and you can take that end off and uh, hold on to one side is the prayer request and the other side is the announcements of the week that are coming up. You will notice on, the, on that page that we actually have the dates lined up for the two big things that are coming up within weeks. I was just telling Pastor Mark uh, from this Sunday on, I think we're four or five Sundays away from Advent. And then not only that, we're just a couple of Sundays away from um, having our annual Thanksgiving dinner, which we will have downstairs. So if you have some people that you would like to invite, please invite them to worship, to sit with you, to join in singing and lifting up their voices with you, to join with listening to scripture with you. And as we gather together, which is exactly what it is, we will then walk downstairs and gather as we break bread together. And that I believe is November 21st. I'm not looking at my bulletin. Am I right? I know you all have your bulletins. I hope you guys got your bulletins off of the, the table back there. It is the 20th. Thank you. The 20th. November 20th is our annual Thanksgiving dinner. We've already started uh, collecting. And um, I have to say this, a big thank you for anyone that is putting in the offering, especially a designated portion to allowing the ministry of the Thanksgiving dinner to take place. Thank you for doing that. And so I'll pause for a minute. As we thank for those that are giving for the ministries that are happening, we do have the offering plates right here and toward the back there where you can at any time during the service um, give. And in giving, it, it does these things. It allows people to 
break bread together. And so we can minister that way. And so thank you for your tithes and offerings that you are doing with that. Along with that, you will notice there is a date given to Christmas in the neighborhood. Christmas in the neighborhood affects those that surround us. That's exactly what it's called. That's the whole purpose of it, that the church does ministry in the neighborhood that it lives in. And so we're having other people join along with the church in the community that are sponsoring and, and, and being a part of the uh, Christmas in the neighborhood that takes place on December 11th. I got that one correct, don't I? All right, I'm just testing myself, okay? Testing you too. December 11th, and you will notice, if you had a calendar on your Apple Watch or if you had a calendar in front of you, you will notice December 11th is actually a Sunday. And so we, just like last year, we are gonna designate that Sunday to actual missionary mission work meaning that it'll be a short service inside, and then we will go outside and we will greet and meet, and hopefully someone will actually come to service before going to uh, Christmas in the neighborhood. And so we'll have a couple hours of, of fun outside. So if you have never seen Christmas in the neighborhood, it's on Sunday, you'll be here, you can walk outside and you can sit in the sunshine and enjoy. And I do say sunshine because it's a beautiful Christmas in the neighborhood in Southern California. <laughs> it's beautiful elsewhere, don't get me wrong, but it is, it is kind of enjoyable to just have your short sleeves on or whatever and sit outside in the sunshine and worship and part break bread and um, see the smiles on kids' faces. That'll take place. I'm telling you all this in a long kind of form because in a matter of weeks, this stuff is coming. In a matter of weeks, you will have the ability to hand out a flyer to someone and actually, ready, invite them. Invite them to what your church is doing. And, and, and so if you invite them, make sure you're there to participate. Hey, I invited you, now I'm gonna hang out with you. That's a, a great way to do it um, December 11th. You'll also, the last thing, you'll also notice that in your bulletin is the prayer calendar for November. And so um, go ahead and take that home as we pray on specific days for individuals and their families and for the ministries. You'll notice some of them is the ministries of the Wuri Church, the, the Korean church that follows us, as well as the ministries that I've been talking about within the church. We will pray for those also. And so I just want to welcome each and every one. I hope you guys are happy to be in worship as we gather together. Let us continue to worship. <clears throat> Thank <laughs> you. 
Before we go into a time of uh, song, into prayer, um, just a reminder to see the things that are on your, your list of prayer requests. Um, things are changing and uh, things are happening. We want to just kind of continue to uplift those that are on there. There's many health issues. There's many financial issues. There's uh, life-changing things that are happening within families as well as um, praying for Corey and Abby Stocksdale, uh, missionaries with their family over in Botswana, Africa. And so we want to continue to remember those kinds of things. But we also want to be reminded to, uh, as I said earlier on the prayer calendar, um, usually it's on the week, on the Saturdays, where we are praying for the ministries of the church. And so I just want to remind you that through, you know, it doesn't have to be just Saturday where you're praying for uh, the church you call home. And so continue to uplift the ministries of the church, uplift the situations of uh, finance to actually, now that you're hearing, boy, there's things that are just more than the congregation. They're actually reaching out. And so in reaching out, there are financial obligations. So, you know, I um, ask that you pray for the church in those situations that all this can be done, not to pat the church on the back, but to give God all glory in what's taken place in not just what's in the sanctuary, but outside the sanctuary. So I remind you to, um, as we pray for one another, pray for what's happening with one another and the ministries within the church. Um, as we continue to pray, um, there's probably things that I have forgotten or have not had information on. If you um, would like me to pray or have the church pray for you, um, I recommend you look around. Because if you raise your hand, we pray especially for you. If you have a situation that you need prayer for that's happening within the week, and we'll continue to, to pray um, for the church people. Thank you for raising your hands. And there are those um, I will say this, that are listening on the phone, I told you earlier, that have health issues. We want to pray for them. Uh, Sister Susan called this morning and asking for prayer. And so I reminded her, besides praying for her, with her, I reminded her that we would also remember her in our prayers. I do not believe she's on the list. And so it was just for today, as we uh, lift up those who are listening in the situations, as well as those um, here this morning, we want to always pray for one another. Pastor Mark, come and uh, continue to lead us in worship on our prayer. Gracious Father, gracious Father, Thank you. 
As we lift our hearts in prayer this morning, Alleluia. God, we are so grateful to, as said, to join together in worship, to give you glory, to give you honor, to give you praise, to lift up our minds and our hearts towards you, God, to just concentrate in these moments. It is good to just step away from what is outside sometimes and come to a place and gather together with other people wanting to worship you. It, is, it brings joy to our hearts, God, to please you. God, we ask that um, the things that are written, that we be reminded of them throughout the week, that we learn to uh, pray more and more for one another, to, to truly uh, listen to the needs and listen and grow closer to the people that gather together as a family and just really lift up our prayers um, praying for one another. We are reminded that there's health issues, financial, and many things that go with it. But at the same time, God, we just want to be reminded to always be looking for other reasons, other things other thoughts on why we pray, things that come our way, opportunities to pray for more, to pray for the ministries, especially for the church. The things that are mentioned, God, may we have an anointing on the families that come in contact with the church. May we have an anointing upon their hearts with your Holy Spirit. May there be this desire to either know you or come and draw closer to you. And if this place here, God, if Culver City Church of God um, has the opportunity to invite them to worship, may they be open to the, the uh, idea of joining with others to see what you you are doing to see the, mir the miraculous power of God at work in a congregation that is trying to um, minister as well as grow spiritually on our uh, as a, a family together. God, there are things that uh, we ask that you'll especially be on uh, the loved ones that we know of and uh, that are drawn to our mind. And some even come within the instant of the day in phone calls that need your touch, God. We're so grateful that it's not just a place here where you allow you the anointing of your Holy Spirit, that you are on all places and you have already known all things. And so, God, we ask that our eyes will be open and our hearts and minds will be in tune the fact of the things of what you're doing with those that we are praying for. We give you praise for uh, the things that we do know of, that we see, where uh, prayers have been answered. Then we ask also, God, for patience when we don't see the answer or results right away. May we be reminded that it's not our timing, but it is, it is your timing. Draw us close to know that timing that you have, God. May we even be at a portion of our, our time might be used to influence others as we are praying for them. We do pray for the ministries of the church, God. We uplift this congregation, especially give the members that are, that are present, the members that are in tune, the, the strength, the encouragement to uh, uh, lift your name in the community. We are grateful for other organizations that are um, donating to the process of being a part of uh, what takes place in our community here, God. Uh, we ask a blessing upon them that you will uh, 
uh, give abundance in the things that they are doing as they too join in uh, in whatever way, in food or in uh, gifts or however they uh, choose to uh, uh, be a part of this community, God. We ask a blessing upon them. We ask an anointing upon the finances of the church that are given that um, it goes to help with the ministries of the church. That someone will come to know you. Someone will uh, not just come to know you, but they will begin to uh, interact with a body of believers to grow spiritually strong, God. We ask that you'll be with the, the scriptures that are spoken today. May we be in, uh, encouraged. May we be uh, equipped to grow closer to you, to grow stronger in our faith. God, we ask that you'll continue to accept our praise and worship unto you this day. And the things that of hands that are raised or the things were, that might have been forgotten or not even spoken yet, God, we ask especially um, a prayer upon those things. And if we can be a part to where we are um, influencers for you in any of it, show us those opportunities. Uh, again, accept our praise and worship as we give it to you. In Jesus' name, amen. Good morning. I'm going to be reading out of Psalms chapter 78 verses 1 through 7. Give ear, O my people, to my law. Incline your ears to the words of my mouth. I will open my mouth in a parable, and I will utter dark sayings of old, which we have heard and known, and our fathers have told us. We will not hide them from their children, telling to the generations to come the praises of the Lord and his strength and his wonderful works that he has done. For he established a testimony in Jacob and appointed a law in Israel, which he commanded our fathers that they should make them known to their children, that the generation to come might know them, the children who would be born, that they may arise and declare them to their children, that they may set their hope in God and not forget the works of God, and may not be like their fathers, a stubborn and rebellious generation, a generation that did not set its heart aright and whose spirit was not faithful to God. And then I'm going to be reading the New Testament, um, Romans chapter 6, verses 1 through 8. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? Certainly not. How shall we who die to sin live any longer in it? Or do you not know that as many of us as were baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? Therefore, we were buried with him through baptism and death, that just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. For we have been united together in the likeness of his death. Certainly we also shall be in the likeness of his resurrection. Knowing this, that our old man was crucified with him, that the body of sin might be done away with, that we should no longer be slaves to sin. For he who has died has been freed from sin. Now, if we died with Christ, we believe that we shall also live with him. There is peace and joy in the and all that sin. There shall be life and the Lord I will 
I am free. Praise the Lord. I am free. Yes, I'm free indeed. Let me grab something real quick. Oh, my goodness. Lauren Daniela. Okay, it's still up. And so she is going <laughs> to, she's going to click my notes to the printer. I'm going to open the door and, uh, the, the thing is, I, I, I know, and so I'm going to tell you right now, because you can see on the screen, go ahead and turn in your Bibles, and the Bible's in front of you, to Judges chapter 4. I love telling Bible stories. Why? Because these Bible stories are, um, they're markers in, in the journey of life through Scripture. And uh, talking in con with Connie, who is, uh, uh, she's involved in a, a Bible study, and, and they're having these conversations, and um, as they are going through the, the New Testament, it's like, wow, I cannot believe how much the New Testament repeats itself. Did I say Old Testament, or I said New Testament? Old Testament. Guess what they do in the New Testament? They repeat what was in the Old Testament. The, the Old Testament is very repetitive, and sometimes, if you read the scriptures, in the same chapter, they are repetitive. But there's a thing, uh, you know, and I, I laugh because I, I'm right there with her. First of all, I really don't like reading. I just, I do it. I do it because more of I have to. I do some of it because, now if it's really cool, then I like reading it. I don't mind. But I do have to read it slow to kind of really keep it. And so one of the things is though, uh, is that in reading repetitive things, it eventually does stay with you. You, re, you know, it's almost like you're talking about, yeah, I read read this over and over. But you know what? As you're telling me the story of what you read over and over, means you got it. You remember what it was. In fact, there was even one part where not only do you re read repetitive things in the scriptures, especially the Old Testament, there's some massively gross things that take place in the Old Testament. Like, and I've, I know I've said that, I'll repeat this, that... In the Old Testament, in the scriptures itself, Hollywood has nothing. In fact, I think there's someone in Hollywood who has the Bible going, you know what, that one looked pretty gory right there. I think we could put that in a movie. <laughs> yeah, they, they, they steal from the Bible. They plagiarize the Bible. 
And here's the thing, those people who don't read scripture, <laughs> they have no idea Hollywood is plagiarizing the scriptures. <laughs> and so, now somebody like, I don't think they played, guess what, you, you'll see things in there like, uh, uh, in the horror flicks especially, maybe that's what it is, in the horror flicks especially, like the blood and gore that was in the Old Testament is in some of the movies we have today. And so it's just the way it is. Now I'm going to say this, you as a follower of Christ, you who say, you know what, I love the scriptures, because I do, I can then talk to people, yeah, you know what, there's this one story, and I could just start telling the story in the scriptures that relate to something they saw on the movies, and all of a sudden, are you ready? You are connecting God with your conversation with an individual. Of course, the only way you can do that there's only one way you can do that, and that's to know the scriptures, to know the stories, to read those repetitive lines over and over. And, and you know what? Excuse me one sec, because I did hear it going here, Lauren Daniela. And so uh, I appreciate that. I like when I have helpers, okay? Yeah. And sometimes things just go wacko. Last week, ready? I'm going to take a, a, a little side note here. Last week, I, here's where you need to humble yourself sometimes. You know, I felt really good coming to the pulpit. I felt really good because it's like, man, everything seemed to, in my mind to click, to go in order. Um, you, you, uh, I, I can't remember who questioned me, but I'm like, yeah. I was like, yeah, I'm ready. This is great. It's a good feeling to be like, 20 minutes well in advance. It's, it's kind of like those, those cooking shows that Connie likes to watch. There's always that one chef who gets done really fast. Hey, I got nothing else to do. It's all done. And then all of a sudden, they get the major critique to what they did. You know, you could have done this. You had 20 minutes. You could have done this and this and this. Well, last week, I felt good. I thought everything was in line except for... First of all, the, the ministry was online with no sound, <laughs> meaning a button got, did not get clicked. I had my, you know, and, and Lauren's smiling because one of the last things that takes place, Dad, do you need anything for me to do anything? And a lot of times you go, is your, is your, is your uh, notes printed? And last week I'm like, yeah, they were. As I'm preaching, right? See, because here's the thing with my notes. It's not like I got to go, okay, I'm going to tell you this. I'm going to tell you that. I mean, I kind of look, look down. I get to what should have been the last page. And you know what I saw? Brown wood. My last page wasn't there. And I thought, oh, man. I had it. But you know what? So, so then this Sunday, I come in, and, and that printer is so slow sometimes you know, or, or, or the gremlins or whatever it is. I, have, I kid. <laughs> My last page was there. And, and I'm going to tell you what I did. I looked at it and I went, man, that was way better than what I did. God, you should have helped me on that one. <laughs> You should have got my page out fast enough. I don't, I kid. I'm not blaming God, all right? Don't get me wrong. What I'm saying is, in your journey, be prepared. Don't be arrogant. Humble yourself. Make sure everything is lined up. And so to help others know about God in a moment, you got to know. Every day, ready? is filled with moments. We can all agree on that. I just expressed some of the moments that have taken place in my life. Some were good and some were bad. Some were ready. Some were like, I, can't, I enjoy, there's some things where I tell stories or I have these, you can ask Connie, Brent has all these memories and he'll tell you very long stories of his memories. Why? Because they're so, to me, they were so impacting. They were a moment that you just don't forget. I sat in the park, oh, maybe it was last week or two weeks ago with uh, uh, a grandmother. And uh, because she was with her grandson, who was great best friends with my grandson. And so when I walked up, you know, I, I told you how I am. I, I'm not really, 
I'm more, I, I will talk to you. And I say that in a nice way because I'm walking up and I see the situation. And so I prepare myself now, babe. I prepare myself. I'm going to have conversation. And here's what happened. She said something that went so far back into my past. And I'm like, we were both telling all these stories of Italy and Spain and England and Belgium and France and, the, and just going on and on and on. And I, I think finally she said, man, we could talk about stuff like this forever. And I'm like, yeah, okay, I understand, quit. <laughs> but man, you get me on pommes frites in Belgium wrapped in, in a newspaper, those are impacting moments. And so when I remember them, man, I can tell those stories. Then there's other impacting moments where you just wish you could forget that memory. Am I correct on that? There's times in our lives, man, I just, I wish I could blot that one out and not even remember that one. But we have every day moments in our lives that are very, or have the ability to be not only impacting, but you could label them as markers in your life. Like the story I just told you, it was 1983, 1979, uh, 1980, and, and the list goes on in that era, okay? of a time frame, and it was a marker in my life where it took place. We all have those moments in life where they are markers in our life. Some, and before I read the story, think about it. You have times in your life where, wow, come on, you stand tall, man, that was good. I was involved in something that was great. And that is the marker in your life. And, and it could have even have been yesterday where something happened. Wow, I was a part of something really great. I did something really good. It's a marker in my life that I'll probably never, ever forget. Your Bibles, Judges chapter 4. Sometimes when the opportunities come in your life, where they could be, as I was describing, the great marker in your life, where someone would go and go, you know what, they might go down through family history and go, yeah, you know what, when so-and-so did this, it was incredible. And then there's going to be times, like in our story, where the opportunity for a magnificent, godly marker in your life could take place, and you passed it by, passed it off. And that's where our story is in Judges chapter 4. <laughs> okay, before I start, you'll notice in the Old Testament, it's, uh, the, uh, the uh, setup is usually kind of the same. You got God's people doing godly things for a lot of years. Woohoo! Had a godly leader. Godly leader dies, all of a sudden, the, the God's people's not doing godly things. Then a godly leader comes, and woohoo! now they're doing godly things. The godly leader dies, and woo now we're not doing godly things. Especially in the book of, of Judges or Chronicles or Kings, you will see they were, the, the king reigned this many years. They were good. The king died this many years. They were bad. <laughs> Ready? Or, and in this case, I believe it is, uh, no, it's another in the book of Daniel, you have where you got a king who knew God, who proclaimed God, who still had his difficulties, and his son came, and they were even worse. Here we go. Missed markers. Again, the Israelites did evil in the eyes of the Lord, now that Ehud was dead. So the Lord sold them into the hands of Jabin, king of Canaan, who reigned in Hazar, Sisera, Excuse me, in Hazar. Sesera, the commander of his army, was based in Harasheth because he had 900 chariots fitted with iron and had cruelly oppressed the Israelites for 20 years. So they cried to the Lord for help. I want you to picture, see, as I read the scriptures, I'm like, wow, anybody want to see, I'm going to take you back to a marker. Anybody ever see Ben Hur? Oh, my goodness. All right, all right. 
how, I'm like, how could you have not seen? There wasn't many movies, you know. How could you miss Ben Hur? You know, it was a marker in movie history. I'll tell you that. And they had these really cool chariots, or you could even go into movies in Lauren's age, Gladiator. <laughs> okay, chariots were really cool. <laughs> And so here in this story, I think the chariot's really cool. I can picture it decked out with some massive iron that added to the cruelty that oppressed the Israelites. And so what do you think? Here's the thing. When the Israelites start doing evil in the eyes of the Lord, and then it starts to happen. Uh, see, here's one thing. When you're doing evil against God, when you're going personally against God, you're like, woohoo, yay! And then all of a sudden, when things start going bad your way, then all of a sudden, boo-hoo, and we're crying to God. We're just like the scriptures. That's why they're there for us. We're just like it. When things are going great, no matter what, for God or against God, when you're going great, what you think is great against God, and then all of a sudden, the bottom hits, and then all of a sudden, you realize the only one I can cry to is God. We are just like the scriptures. We're just like the Israelites. Man, cruelty is coming up against us. Deborah, a prophet, the wife of Leopoldeth, was leading Israel at the time, meaning she was judging Israel. And I, you know what I, I think I like about this story? And I say it all the time to people I talk to. Anyone that degrades a woman as following God and being a leader in God's work, shame on you. Because I'm telling you, you better start ripping some pages out of your Bible where a lot of women were the markers in the history of God's journey on this planet. Deborah is one of them. And she is judging the nation. And as she is judging, let me continue on. I'm at verse 5. She held the court under a palm of Deborah between Ramah and Bethel in a hill country of Ephraim. And the Israelites went up to her to have their disputes decided. This woman made such a marker in life, such a moment in life, that people knew this is who you go to. There's the palm tree that's labeled. you got to make the journey to have your decisions worked out. And so that's where she is at. Let me continue. On. Verse 6, for she, she sent for Barak, son of Abnam, for dis, for from Kadesh, there's a lot of places in the, not only is there repetition, there's a lot of tongue to tongue to the hard words to say of these cities they lived in. So let me go back to it. So here she is called Barak, the son of Abna of Kadesh in, Nep in Naphtali, and said to him, the Lord, the God of Israel commands you. I want you to know, here's a woman who's judging, who's leading the nation who is a godly woman, who says to a man that she is personally called, I'm telling you, God has commanded you. Not me, Deborah. God has commanded you. She continues in her conversation with him. Go take with you 10,000 men of Nathali and Zebulun and lead them up to Mount Tabor. I will send Sisera, the commander of Jabin's army, with his chariots and his troops to the Kishon River and give him into your hands. This woman had clout. She was, are you guys understanding? Walk away from the hard words and here's what you have. She calls a man whose name is Barak. She said, God has commanded you. And this is what he said. Get 10,000 men from these two places. I want you to go to this place over here. And I will tell this bad Sisera commander and his armies to go up there. And God will give them into your hand. Do you understand the marker in life that Barak was now facing? The moment that he was facing. And in my opinion, it's easy, <laughs> hindsight's easy. It's easy to step back and read the scripture and go, you know what, man, first of all, God commanded. First of all, God gave the plan. First of all, God gave the finality of the plan. How could you say no? Well, let's just check it out. Ready? I guess he could say no very quickly. <laughs> they were getting, I, I, and it, it goes, 
and, and he will give them into your hands. Verse 8, this is how he says it. Barak says to her, if you go with me, I will go. But if you don't go with me, I won't go. Okay. Marker destroyed. You were commanded by God to do these things. She just passed on the message to you. And now you're saying you're only going to go if the messenger goes? And if she decides to stay under the palm tree of Deborah, you're not going to go? Here we go. Whew. Certainly I will go with you. See, now Deborah, she's a very smart woman. She's a godly woman, and she doesn't waste any time. Certainly I will go with you, said Deborah, but because of the course you are taking, ready? Because of the marker you are missing, because of the moment you are passing, because of the course you are taking, the honor will not be yours. Can I pause for a sec there too? All of a sudden there was this outside interjection of what was in the plan. The plan was gather 10,000 men from two cities, go to that spot, you wait for me to command this rotten commander to take his army up there and God will give them into your hands. And then we find out an underlying thing. You could have had honor. But because you chose this course, you will have lost the honor. Let me get back to where I was. Because it goes on, it, now it really gets big. Because the Lord will deliver Sisera, ready? Who, into whose hands? Who was going with Barak? A woman. Not just any woman, Deborah. So the honor will leave you and go to her. The honor will leave you and go to me. That's what she's saying. Oh, man. Wow. Okay. So Deborah went with Barak to Kadesh. There Barak summoned Zebulun and, the, and Naphtali. And 10,000 men went up under his command. Deborah also went up with him. See, we're always reminded what the moment is. Barak messed up. But still, the plan is going forward, isn't it? Now, Heber and Kenite had left the other Kenites and the descendants of Hobab, Moses' brother-in-law, and pitched his tent by the great tree of Zananim near Kadesh. When they told Sisera that Barak, son of Abinah, had gone up to the Mount Tabor, Sisera summoned from Harasheth, Hageman, to the... Kishon River, all his men, and 900 chariots fitted with iron. So once again, the writer is just kind of playing out this, understand this clash that is about to take place. And the, in, in my opinion, the writer, see, God says just take these men up to a mountain. The writers emphasize it. Not only is men coming to the mountain, but what? 900 chariots with iron. Not wooden ones, not breakable ones. We're talking about stuff that would do what? We learned earlier on that would oppress the Israelites. Then Deborah said to Barak, go. This is the day the Lord has given Sisera into your hands. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? Listen to the questions. Has not the Lord gone ahead of you? See, that's the things we miss in our moments. The understanding that, you know what, when God commands you to do something, when God asks you, the individual that is sitting here today, to do something for him, he has already got that path already lined up. He's already got the Holy Spirit ready to guide each step you're going to take. Why? Because it's his plan. So Barak went down to Mount Tabor and with 10,000 men following him. And Barak, at Barak's advance, the Lord routed Sisera and all his chariots and the army by the sword. And Sisera got down from his chariot. This individual got down from his chariot and fled on foot. Man, are you, listen to these moments. Ready? It was always the chariots are coming. The chariots with iron are coming. 900 chariots are coming. And one of them's going to hold Sisera. And guess what? That chariot of iron didn't do squat with God. 
did it. Because all of a sudden, that chariot wasn't good enough, and he got down off the chariot, and he started running like a yellow-bellied chicken, right? I don't know how you say it today. I want to emphasize, he was a quitter. He was a coward. He left his men and started running. Barak pursued the chariots and army as far as Hashadath, and all Sesera's troops fell by the sword. Actually, no one lived. Ready? <laughs> I'm going to shorten it up here. As the chicken starts running, he runs a long way. He gets out of breath and he comes up to a tent and guess who's standing at the tent? I'll give you a guess between genders. Who do you, a woman. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> a woman was at the tent. Oh, and he can say, oh, man, can you hide me? Can you let me in? And so he gets in and he describes her. They're coming after me. If they come, if you will just tell them I'm not here. We're looking for Caesarea. No, he's not here. That's what he wanted. That's what he wanted the moment to be. And guess what? Because God always has a plan. And in this story, it definitely deals with the women. So she says, yes. She hides him. She puts him under uh, a thing. And, and he's actually, because he ran so much, can I have a drink? So she even gives him a drink, which will be his last drink. Because once she covers the tent and they're still trying to come, they're not at the tent yet. He's there. He's there long enough and tired enough to fall asleep. And what do you think she did? They're in a tent. Tent peg. Does that give you a hint? Boy, I'm telling you, Hollywood has nothing. She takes the tent peg and a hammer or a device to take the tent peg. And if you read the scriptures, not only does she hit him in the head with the tent peg, she drives the tent peg through his hole, hit through his hole, through his head into the ground. Just quoting scripture. <laughs> so now, uh, Barack and his people come to the tent. We're looking for Sesera. And I could just picture it in my mind how it goes. She lifts that little piece of blanket up off of the tent peg that's in. She probably had to go like that and get because the tent peg went through. And so she gets the blanket off, and here's a tent peg and a head in the ground. There he is right there. That's a marker. <laughs> I, I think, because in my head, I, that's, I'm going to go back for just a moment. When people talk about women in ministry, these are some of the stories that just, just shoot out at me. I do like Deborah. I like Ruth. I like Esther. When you read these women, and, the, and then there's so, you know, the women at the tomb. I mean, th this stuff just excites me. And guess what? There's men in ministry that are just as exciting. Why? Because God is not a, a, a one of male, female, Jew, Greek. God is one of doing his plan that people come to know him. You have a massive army that is crushing the Israelites, and God gives a command, 10,000 people, and I'll take care of it. 10,000 fighters, and I will take care of it. And he did exactly what he said. What a marker. Now I'm going to ask us questions. We have this journey of life, and, I, and I'm telling you, if I'm sh I know it's not just me. You could probably pass through your memory and go, you know what? There's a marker. There's a marker. There's a marker. I know it because I've had conversations with individuals in here today, knowing where you have been, where you have traveled to, who you've had conversation with. I know these things, and some of these things are stories to me because they were important markers in your life. We talked about some just this morning. I can always use Pastor Mark of ministry in Mexico. I know people that have walked the Navy Pier of Chicago. 
And I can tell you what, Connie had to drag me away from uh, <laughs> from the, the grocery store counter at the at the cashier because I found out she was from Chicago. <laughs> and so Connie's like, there's other people trying to pay. <laughs> I, cause I, so I'll talk about Chicago. Uh, bear with me just a minute. We the kids had their, their harvest festival, and so I got asked to uh, be a, a volunteer at one of the carnival games, just like what we used to do and what we do for our Christmas in the neighborhood. And so, and, and the lady that asked me, I, I know, and in, I told Pastor Mark this this morning, in my heart, I'm like, I know how hard it is to get volunteers. And she personally asked me to volunteer. I didn't sign up. And, but, and so I'm like, okay, yes, I will. And for me, it became a marker. In fact, kind of goes, you had fun though, didn't you? And I, I did. Some of the kids that were there were like, man, dad was just like out there in the church parking lot, sweating. <laughs> I, had my, I went to relax. I, you know, this marker was supposed to be me looking at people going, yeah, you know, the grandkids are having it. That was supposed to be my marker. Instead, my marker was, come on, you can hit it. You can throw that ring in there. You can do it. There's five. You got four more shots. Here, have a piece of candy. Have a piece of candy. Have a piece of candy. And so I was, I had my sweatshirt on. I had a, I'm taking my sweatshirt off one arm at a time, handing the kid a ring. A arm, I looked like a, a monster. My arm was hanging out on the bottom of my sweatshirt at the moment, handing a ring. And finally, they got that fifth ring. I took my sweatshirt off, which then became a do rag because I was sweating. But I'm telling you what, in my line, hopefully the, the people that put this on don't hear this. I'm just saying that. Because in my line, I think there were rules. I didn't look at wristbands. I didn't, and every kid that tossed, if they missed all five, take a piece of candy. <laughs> and I always, I always make sure, just take one, because I'm the line that gives everyone the prize. <laughs> Whether you make, there was kids, all of a sudden, right, talking about markers, I'm seeing smiling faces that had already seen three and four times. And ready, here's my marker, ready? This one little boy, I go, dude, you know I don't have no candy. He goes, that's all right. I just like playing the game. That is a marker to remember. I'm going to add it to, to the Harvest Festival we used to do. Man, it got so big. And, we, and God bless you guys because we collected so much candy. At the end of Harvest Festival, we were taking the coolers and just pouring candy in the kids' back. You're the last ones here. We ain't taking no candy home. Two things happen. Parents are like this. Kids are like, yeah. Just another marker in life. In your journey, I'm going to give you some, ready for some spiritual stuff? See, because everything that I say, it does have a connection. There's things in a spiritual journey that you need to do. Remember, one of the first things was to tell the stories. To tell the stories over and over. Which means, like I said, you have to remember what God has done. In Psalms chapter 77, it talks about, I have to remember the deeds. In fact, I remember the things you have done, God. And I'm going to tell, the, I'm going to paraphrase here, okay? Because I'm going to connect life. As a marker with the scripture, not only am I going to read and tell people the deeds you have done, I'm going to do it the way I can. This is what God has done. Here's the miracles that God did in the past. People are going to say, oh, no, the Red Sea didn't, didn't uh, open up. Oh, no, there was no Noah's Ark. Oh, no, there's none of this. And you're going to sit there and say, well, you know what? God told these stories and passed them on to us, and I'm going to tell you these stories. This is what God does. God has people laying on other people, and the dead rise up. You know what? Greatest thing about dead rising up, there was one who rose up, and he was the one that rose up for all of humanity, and that was Jesus Christ. Recite what God has done. This is what he is. And then in doing that, not only do we tell the stories, but we come on Sunday, we come on Wednesday, because we do the same thing in those times, and we praise God. 
You just don't have a story. You glorify him. Give him honor. Sing to your best ability and no one around cares how well you sing or how bad you sing. Raise your voice and sing praise to God. Why? Because he is faithful. Ready, Connie? And then we are to repeat them over and over. <laughs> Man, I like that because then when I talk too much, I, I, you, we're supposed to repeat the things. The things, now I'm going to go with this though. Repeat the things of God. Repeat the laws that he has. We, we live in a land where people struggle with laws. You know, I'm going to narrow it down to 10. You know, let's just do the 10. You do the 10 and the others will do. You, oh, whoa, 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 whoa. Let's go New Testament. Let's just do two. Jesus said, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and all your strength. And love your neighbor as yourself. You do these, everything will fall under it. Wow. Repeat those things. Repeat what Jesus has done. We have not done it in a while. We need to get back into doing it. Repeat communion over and over. Because one of the things in communion that is, is a, said often is the reason we, we have a remembrance of the body being broken on the cross, the remembrance we have the, of Jesus shedding his blood is so that we can proclaim it until he comes for us. Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Repeat it, repeat it, repeat it. One of the things in your repetition is keep it kind of, I'll say this, keep it clean. Keep it clean. In the repetition of your markers in life, keep it clean. Why do I say that? Because also in the repetition, in Philippians, Philippians uh, chapter 4, I think it is. Yes, Philippians chapter 4. It says in verse 8, finally, brothers and sisters, that's us, whatever is true, Whatever is noble, whatever is right, whatever is pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about such things. Whatever you have learned or received or heard from me or seen in me, put it into practice. That means someone has to be a great mentor. Someone has to be a great teacher. Someone has to be a great hanging out best friend that is godly and put it into practice, and the God of peace will be with you. I love that scripture because as you do your part, keeping those markers clean, God does his part, and he is with you. His peace will be with you. One of the last things is to renew yourself. This is the beauty of coming to church. Renew yourself. I'm going to only take a few more moments. What does that mean? Uh, uh, Romans chapter 12, what, verses 1 and 2 says what? Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice. That makes markers, just so that you know. Holy and pleasing to God. Remember what I said, keep it clean. So your markers, your life, is a sacrifice to God and what's happening and it's pleasing to him. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of the world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you'll be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. Now, that's talking about the path that we are walking. You want to know, am I doing what God wants? Am I really doing what God wants? Maybe I'm going to ask the very first question. Have you ever prayed about what God wants? Really prayed, God, what do you really, really want? Besides praying for Church of God Ministries <laughs> that takes place here. Are you praying for what you want? For, excuse me, what God wants. Are you praying for what God wants? And are you listening for his answer? Renew yourself. Practice it. So I'm going to close with just a couple of questions. Pastor Mark, come on up. We all travel on different journeys, do we not? I mean, I rattle off some things where that's where my, my, my passion of talking comes from. If I can connect with you in any kind of thing, we will talk. 
But at the same time, we all have different journeys. Um, I am reminded day after day after day, <laughs> Connie's journey was way different than my journey. <laughs> but I can tell you what, in this, this journey together, God has had a plan and a path, and as long as we have stuck with his will and sought out his will, these two journeys can come together, correct? I hope she says correct. <laughs> she shakes her head yes, just so everyone knows. So here I am asking you this. How would you describe, how would you describe your journey? How would you describe the markers and the moments in your life with God? How would you describe that? No, I'm not looking for answers. I want you to think, okay, well, how would I describe my journey with God? Ooh. Let me get going like this. If somebody else was to ask you, what has God done for you? You know, as I'm, as I'm reading these questions, this has taken place, don't be afraid. This has taken place within our Wednesday night Bible studies where people are being asked, hey, I want you to tell a little story of what God has done in your life. What if someone was to ask you that question that wasn't Cindy? <laughs> or what if someone was to ask you that question and you weren't sitting in a Bible study class? You were like outside or McDonald's or, or Starbucks or some other place. What if someone asked you what God's done for you? Now here's a question for you. What, is, what difference has being a follower of Jesus made in your life? Well, I could answer those things really quick. I could take all the bad stuff I had, <laughs> and I go, whoa, I've kind of changed that. <laughs> but there, I could change some of these. They were really hard to change, but God has helped me change them. What difference has being a follower of Jesus made in your life? Here's a big one. If you could impact the spiritual life of anyone in your relationships, anyone that you influence, if you could impact their spiritual life, who would you like to see take steps closer to following God? Steps closer to following Jesus. Who in your life are you like, you know what, if I told stories like what pastor's telling, or if I told stories that are my own, that are my markers, how God has been in my life, if I was to do that, would someone go, you know, I'm going to hang out with that person. I'm going to hang out, and I want to grow spiritually as they grow. I want to grow closer to Jesus. Maybe we should spend time. I talked about prayer a lot today. Maybe we should spend time praying for those that we come in contact with. Pray for them. Ask them, ask God, is this going to be the marker that you have um, ready for their life? See, if we, if we say, man, I, I, I follow Jesus, that's our marker. I know, I know when I was baptized. I know when I got saved. I know when I had my difficulties in life and had to ask for forgiveness again. Those are markers. In fact, I'm going, to, I'm going to close with this one. Baptism especially is a marker. You know why? Because Connie read this, this, this scripture about dying and how Christ was raised and how if we are like that, we are raised with him, we will have life with him. That's great. That's a great marker. Baptism in the water going under, like Jesus went under and he came up. Man, he had a cool one. He went under and he came up and what happened? It was like a dove of the Holy Spirit came down upon him. And then there was the speaking, this is my son who I'm well pleased. That was some of the scriptures we had today. Baptism here is saying to the people out there, you know what? I say that Jesus saved me. I say that I asked for forgiveness. I said that I want my life turned around. I'm going under the water and I'm coming up and I'm showing you, this is my marker. I'm showing you everything's new. I'm a new creation in Christ. Of course, that means when I walk out of the church with my soggy shoes from baptism, that should still be presented out there, that I'm a new creation in Christ. There was my marker. And some of y'all saw my marker. That's what happens sometimes with baptism. We'll talk about that a little later on sometime. As we close, we're going to close with this song, I have decided to follow Jesus. It's a simple thing. 
We're all sitting here, and I can look around. There's probably some listening on the phone. I have decided to follow Jesus. No turning back, no turning back. That's a song of marker right there. That's a song of moment. No turning back, no turning. That means each step that you take is a new moment. May we be pleasing to God, some of the scriptures we read, in our moments. Not just a pat on the back for us, but humbly that that marker might influence someone else as the questions were asked. Let us pray. God, thank you for this time that we've had together. God, if this is it, make it a marker in our life. Make it to where we are drawing closer to you. Make it to where we are uh, making decisions that draw us closer to you. And God, in all of that, help us as we leave the, the, the outside these walls, we might be the influence so someone else can come to know you. If we have something that's messed up in our life, God, we ask for a dramatic change. Allow your Holy Spirit to help us in every step in that change so that when we look back, we see that. That was a marker. That was the day where I stopped doing that. S to sin? Certainly not. But we can only do that through your power. And we have the faith knowing you can and will. In Jesus' name, amen. Get those tent pegs. <laughs> Army surplus. <laughs> <laughs> I have decided Again, I'm so grateful that you joined us this morning. Um, thank you for your tithes and your offerings as we talked about the ministries that are coming up. Please be in prayer for Thanksgiving dinner, breaking bread with not only us, but our family and our friends. And uh, if, you, if you are, please let us know so that we have the right amount of quantity. And so um, uh, that helps us out in doing the ministry as we reach out. Also be in prayer for a Christmas in the neighborhood, December 11th that's coming up. And, and be in prayer for, ready, Wednesday Bible study, 5.30, okay? And so um, we'll be joining together both downstairs and via Zoom, whatever you choose. Check your bulletins for all the other stuff. And uh, uh, just once again, I hope you enjoyed today these moments, these moments, looking for the markers in your life. So as we get ready to dismiss and go out into lunch, to enjoy one another's company, who knows? Maybe that'll be a marker in your life. Always be looking for the opportunities ahead. God, thank you for this time together, a time to worship, a time to laugh, a time to take in, but most of all, uh, a time to be reminded how we can draw close to you. Uh, help us in our, our studies, help us in our words. 
and our actions. May they help lead someone else to know you for their brand new marker in life. In Jesus' name, amen.